In Germany, a movement against Islam is rising. Mosques and Islam are not welcome. Nein zur Moschee. Politicians think so, and many Germans as well. I believe that mosques are used to conquer an area for Allah. One can expect that it will be used to spread division and conflict in the country. The foundation stone of a mosque is being laid. This should not be an issue in a country that practices religious freedom. We want to understand why these people see that differently. Have you ever had a conversation with a Muslim before? No, not really. But wait, why are we doing all this? Because we want to understand what is happening in our country today and what does Germany stand for in this day and age. To find out, we are traveling the country. We not only meet opponents, but also Muslims who were born and raised here. I see myself as a German and uh, it's my home here. One Islamic community is especially at the forefront of society and the media, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. In comparison to other Muslims, we have a special role here in Germany. In the moment, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is standing on top. The times are changing. When we started our research, we found videos like this one. An actor is playing a Muslim who kills a woman with a knife. Campaigns from far-right organizations in the middle of Germany. Our peace-loving religion being used for their political gains. To understand these things, we meet Khula Mariam Hübsch. She is German Ahmadi Muslima, daughter of the late Hadayatullah Hübsch. As a Muslim journalist, she appears regularly on TV shows and also explains the Islamic view to Germans in lectures. She knows well what Germans think about Muslims. There are a lot of studies um, revealing that most of the Germans are afraid of Islam. There is a fear of uh, foreigners and Muslims and especially they associate um, violence, terrorism, the oppression of women um, and the lack of freedom. That, uh, these are the points which are associated and connected with Islam. Right-wing populists recognized this fear and founded a party. Alternative for Deutschland. In short, AFD. In only a few years, this movement has become the third strongest party in the German parliament. Dr. Daud Majoka is a secretary of foreign affairs in the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. He has studied the views of this party. These are some posters by the AFD, the Alternative for Deutschland party, which is a right-wing uh, populist party in Germany. Uh, in this poster, for example, they are asking uh, people to stop the Islamization of Germany. Uh, this is the second poster uh, where they have explicitly asked uh, to forbid the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. And uh, here's another one asking to stop building of new mosques in uh, Germany in a small place. And in this poster, uh, the AFD says that Islam is not compatible with German cuisine and they have uh, pictured a uh, pig on their poster to be provocative. The German fear against Islam. What that means, we witness in Erfurt, a city in East Germany, 200,000 citizens. Here the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is going to build a mosque. Today the foundation will be laid, the atmosphere is boiling. Opponents are standing here. We try to understand them. Do you agree with this person and are you against the mosque too? Of course. May I ask why? Yes, because it does not fit here. We are not allowed to build churches in your country either. Or do you allow it? Germany is my country. Germany is your country. We believe in our God. We don't need this. And I'm against it. We all believe in the same God. There is only one God, right? Your God is also my God. Or is that not the case? This might be true, but I still disagree with you. The ice breaks after a few minutes. Do you know that I served in the German army, even though I am a Muslim? I love and support this country just as you do. And you wouldn't let me have a mosque here? 
Why not? You probably go to work to earn a living here. This is all fine. We do not have anything against such people. We realize that most people here have never spoken to a Muslim before. I think this was an enlightening conversation, wasn't it? Have you previously even spoke to a Muslim? No, not really. How was your experience speaking to a Muslim now? I can say it was a bad experience. I mean, you've been really friendly towards me. There are others who are not that nice and I'm not that nice to them either. You are of course very nice. I can only agree. I realize that speaking with each other helps. I cannot take away all the concerns and worries in five minutes. But this conversation makes me hopeful. But not all dialogue ends positively. We meet Astrid Rote Beinlich, Member of Parliament in the state of Thuringia. She experienced a backlash for supporting the mosque construction. Right-wing demonstrators gathered in front of her house, in total disregard of her privacy. They call their demonstration, Air Force shows its true colors. It was totally dishonest and two-faced that they covered their faces. They hid their identities. They carried signs that said, Erfurt Marbach, you deserve a mosque. They played the Islamic call for prayer and from my point of view, they were clearly disrespectful. They acted blasphemically. They were pretending that Erfurt had been taken over by Islam. What did you feel when you heard them and their personal attacks on you? My husband and I were at home and filmed everything from the window. They were roughly a meter and a half away from us, but we could clearly hear them. It was not nice. What Suleiman Malik experienced was also not nice. Malik is one of those Ahmadis who are very active in doing Tablir in East Germany. The spokesman of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Erfurt was attacked last night. This is the information we got from the police in Thuringia. I have been physically attacked. I have been spat in the face during public events. Death threats have been published on the internet. This does not make us weaker but encourages to move ahead. How do Ahmadis react to these things in general? Are they afraid? We asked Daud Majoka, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat Germany. So such controversies or such movements are in a way helpful for us uh, because um, whenever there is a such controversy, whenever there is such debate, um, in a country or in some area, uh, people uh, like to know more about that uh, subject. They want to know more about Islam. They want to know more about the allegations and the response to those allegations. And this is an opportunity then for us, especially uh, because in the light of the teachings of Hazrat Masih Muslim and the true teachings of Islam, which we have learned from Hazrat Masih Muslim and uh, the Khulafa, we are well prepared to answer these allegations effectively. And what results? Khula Hübsch experienced herself when she met a far-right-wing AFD member of the Parliament of and Germany. She was very much against Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat and she was so furious. And uh, when I started to talk with her, um, um, I was very calm and I explained her our position and at the end of this meeting she offered me to pray in her office because it was praying time and um, I told her I have to leave now because um, you know um, the time for prayer is passing and she said oh no no problem you can stay here in my office and you can pray here in my office. And so she did a Muslim lady praying in the office of an AFD woman. It was such a um, scurrile situation because, you know, um, the German parliament, the House of Parliament uh, offices are um, built in a way that everyone can, can look into the offices. And so I was praying in the office of an AfD member and everyone could see it. And it was really strange that a Muslim is offering her salat. Um, in an office of AfD member. And so it's an example for how people change within minutes, within only half an hour. We had a meeting of half an hour only and she changed completely and at the end she offered um, to speak for us in the House of Parliament and 
uh, to take stand for us. And this young AFD leader is surprised when he meets Ahmadi Muslims for the very first time. An Imam gave me a beautiful quotation that integration means to love the country in which you live. I want to publish this to show the AfD members that Ahmadi Muslims are open-minded in regards of integration. And I will personally add my comment and will say, this is patriotism for me. But when he publishes his open-minded view on Facebook, he earns a lot of criticism from his followers. Finally, he has to resign. We have been astonishingly very successful even in dealing with the AFD members itself, uh, even members of parliament. For example, uh, for the very first time we had a discussion with the president of uh, the AFD in a mosque near Stuttgart uh, and uh, there uh, after the debate the president of the AFD said, if this is Islam, I have nothing against it. Khula Hübsch has similar experiences when she speaks about the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Mostly the reactions are positive from atheists, Jews and Christians. When I um, have meetings with uh, the league meetings, for example, and uh, or I deliver a lecture and um, um, the reaction uh, are always that people say, um, the Islam of Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, that's a beautiful Islam. That's Islam um, they can stand for and that's Islam they like to have uh, in Germany. And that's not the Islam they are afraid of. The Islam of Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is, uh, is beautiful and they are really I impressed. This is not a coincidence. For nearly 100 years the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat has been established here and is known for its activities cleaning the cities, helping homeless people, thousands of conversations everywhere where it is possible, holding charity events, establishing hotlines in German, Turkish and Arabic, attending book fairs, building nearly 60 mosques with many more to come, and educating imams in the German language. Nobody knows the progress of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat in Germany better than he. Abdullah Wageshauser is Amir Jamaat Ahmadiyya Germany and serving in different offices for more than 40 years. We meet him at a very historical place, Nasrbach, near Frankfurt. Once exactly in the same place the Jamaat held its Jalsa Salana. Today the Ahmadi Muslims are gathered for Juma prayer. Unbelievable, I mean that uh... We had here our Jelsa Salana and uh, it was jam-packed at that time and there was a time we had to leave it. Yeah, we had to leave this area. Now we are here on a normal Juma, of course. Today it is even full. Yeah? I mean, it is, uh, that's the, the miracle of Islam Ahmadiyya that, I mean, within a period of a few years, you know, the matter gets out of uh, the, 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 the area where it is, it is expected. I mean, it's a situation, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable to see that uh, this is not Jel Aslana today, it is a Juma prayer. Yeah. Nearly 5 million Muslims live here in Germany. Only 50,000 are Ahmadis. That is just one person of the Muslims in Germany. But this one person has a great impact. I would like to say that uh, in the moment the Ahmadi Muslim Jamaat is standing on top, this is, I mean, of course, a bit, uh, uh, an, what you can say, an outstanding statement. But uh, the fact is that with the passage of time, I mean, we moved to this position and uh, it is even uh, assured by others as well. And one who is actively involved in spreading the message of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is Kamar Mahmood. Mahmood is organizing the social media campaigns of the Jamaat. And he knows why this small Jamaat is so successful. The key to our success is, uh, alhamdulillah, the structure of Jamaat, the Nizam. Because when we publish content from the official account, uh, Lajna, Khudam, Ansar all multiply these content to their followers and uh, all the individual accounts attached to these accounts uh, multiply the content uh, as well. So uh, 
if, if that structure wouldn't be given, we couldn't work that way. So the speed and the efficiency in this way is because of the Nizam of the Jamaat. That's, that's the key to our success. The work the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is doing is resulting in very positive feedback. Lots of people come and, uh, and thank us. Thank us for being there, for being in Germany and doing that work and uh, telling the world about the, the, the beautiful face of Islam. Imtiaz Shaheen Ahmed is the Imam of the Noor Mosque. He speaks with many people from different faiths. We ask him what the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat can give to the people in Germany. If, if you see at that people, to these people, they, they actually have everything. You would consider themselves to be rich and be happy and that they have everything. So what, is, um, well, what can actually the Ahmadiyya Jamaat give to these people? So the answer would be God himself. The Imam is explaining why exactly this is needed, although millions of Germans call themselves Christians. But especially the young people here in Germany who um, were born as Christians, they don't see the point in going to churches because they don't actually feel the spirituality. They don't have anything gained or any um, benefit from going to churches. And uh, so that's what actually is missing in these German people. And they are actually looking for inner peace. So no matter how much wealth, how much, uh, um, how many, um, how much money they have actually, and uh, they are living a good life, but still um, they are looking for some things, for spirituality, they are looking for the inner peace, which can only be provided by God himself. One major reason that young Christians are leaving the church is the belief that Hazrat Jesus al-Islam is alive in heaven. Few people believe in such dogma nowadays. Very recently, a well-known German historian pointed out exactly that issue and proved that Hazrat Jesus al-Islam did not die on the cross. Johannes Fried is a very famous and a renowned uh, historian here in Germany. He also um, teaches in different universities here. And um, his, uh, um, his theory, actually, he calls uh, it a theory. He has written a book about this, that Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, he didn't pass away. He didn't die on the cross. He was just unconscious and he actually um, fled after this, after the crucifixion, after they tried to um, uh, kill him, and uh, then he passed away a natural death. And uh, he is giving some uh, proofs from the Bible itself and also some uh, proofs from the medical point of view. And uh, the funny thing is he's actually um, claiming that he's the first one who has uh, brought up these points, for example, the medical point. Ahmadi Muslims know that the promised Messiah al Islam taught this more than 100 years ago. While the historian is searching where Hazrat Jesus al Islam could have been fled, we already know. He's saying that I'm still on my search, I'm still looking for that Jesus who actually fled from this place and he actually went to the east. And the promised Messiah al Islam, he has already mentioned all these things and shown us all the way to India, to Kashmir, where he actually passed away and we actually find today his uh, uh, graveyard. All the things happening nowadays make the Imam hopeful for the future, especially when he looks to the nature of Germans. So this is a good nature of German people, that they accept the truth. It's not like um, when you give them logical um, proofs and proofs uh, from different scriptures, from the Holy Quran, from the Bible, etc., that they would just still reject it and say, no, we don't believe it. So there's no ignorance in these people, mostly. And all these things are showing that the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat will have an outstanding role in the future for the whole nation. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a small community regarding the numbers, but considering the impact, the effect of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, it is a very, very powerful community. And I think this will increase, inshallah, definitely.